are bird watching. It's like playing Pokemon in real life, except without the slavery and blood sports. Oh, it's okay when Ash Ketchum does it, but when I stuff native animals into my balls, I get the RSPCA called on me. Hey, I'm Darcy. You may remember me from such videos as the magpie one or the eucalyptus one. Today, we're going back to basics. We'll be looking at the most common birds in Australia. Obviously, the most common birds will differ depending on your state and territory. For example, magpie geese are very common up north, but not so much down here. I'll be covering each bird briefly with a few little facts. And if you're really good, I might do some more in-depth videos later down the track. I won't be covering any wetland or coastal birds this time, but may make a video on them later as well. So without further ado, let's begin. Colourful, energetic, and instantly recognisable, the rainbow lorikeet is the chaotic neutral of the bird world. Lorikeets can be seen almost anywhere in the country. They are in fact Australia's most spotted bird. Travelling in pairs, they feed predominantly on nectar from native flowers, but also consume nuts and seeds. They have a very unique tongue with filaments on the end to collect nectar. The lorikeet's call is a high-pitched screeching noise, which is pretty hard to miss. Despite their innocent looking appearance, these feisty birds are also known to mob competitors and chase them off. Here's an interesting fact. They're not native to Western Australia or Tasmania and were introduced to both places. The WA government considers them to be a pest. Noisy miners are high on nectar and out for blood. Much maligned by birds and people alike, these unassuming little guys have a reputation for being absolute c Noisy miners are nectar drinkers, but also eat insects too. They've developed a defensive strategy that while I admire it, works a bit too well. It goes a little something like this. Are you a being with a heartbeat within a 100 meter radius of me? Then you have chosen death. Their sugar-powered jihad drives away many other native species, creating minor exclusion zones. The problems with miners have been further exacerbated by, you guessed it, humans, as suburban habitats with lawns favour the miners. They're not to be mistaken with the Indian or common miner, who are a pest species. I'd be remiss without mentioning Australia's favourite bird again, because they're absolutely everywhere. Intelligent, charismatic, feisty and brave, plus harmonica players to boot. For more info on them, check out my video. Speaking of intelligence, here are the top tier big brain birdies. There are three species of ravens in Australia and two species of crows, depending on where you live. Easily identifiable by their glossy black feathers and iconic white eyes. These gliding goths are too smart for their own good and will often be found dumpster diving because they know wherever there are humans, there's food. Their call is also pretty iconic too. They honestly deserve their own video. Easily one of Australia's most recognisable birds, the sulphur-crested cockatoo has a look that will turn heads and a call that will perforate eardrums. These cockies have a large powerful beak for breaking open nuts. Seriously, one of the most enjoyable things in life is watching them eat a pine cone. They're also in the colossal cranium club. Cockies in Sydney have worked out how to open wheelie bins, much to the chagrin of the local residents. Neighbouring cockatoos have learnt how to do it too by watching, and the practice is spreading. Soon no bin will sit unmolested. The sulphur crest's cousin is the lovely galah, a gorgeous and genuinely good-natured bird. However, the word galah means fool in the Uolare language, which is ironic because just like sulphurs, they're also very smart. These pastel pink parrots form large flocks of up to a thousand birds in the wild and have been known to cause power outages in rural towns because their sheer numbers weigh down the power lines. This phenomenon has been called a pink out by me just now. During the breeding season, they dig out eucalyptus hollows with their beaks and use the wood shavings and leaves to create a mattress for the eggs. It's important to preserve old eucalyptus trees with hollows so that birds like the galah can nest. 
The magpie lark, also known as the mudlark or peewee, depending on where you live, is a very common sight throughout the country. Much akin to their mudlark namesakes, these birds can be found foraging on riverbanks for hidden treasures. Appearance-wise, they're often mistaken for the Australian magpie, but are obviously much smaller. However, they do engage in the same trademark swooping behaviour. The name peewee comes from the sound of their call. In a stunning turn of events, magpie larks have solved the national housing crisis by building their quaint little homes out of a sustainable material, mud. But how long it will be before real estate agents start charging us $600 a week to live in these literal dirt bowls? Only time will tell. Red wattle birds are the second largest honey eaters in the country. These guys don't get quite as much attention as the other birds on this list, but they're a common sight in southern Australia. The wattle in their name doesn't actually refer to the plant, but instead the fashionable flesh flaps on the side of their neck. Another telltale sign is the patch of yellow on their belly, like they've just slid down a mustard infused slip and slide. They make a range of bizarre calls, but their standard one is a guttural kind of sound. Like a printer having an asthma attack. Pigeons get a bad name, mostly from their introduced city dwelling members, but there are a number of beautiful native pigeons. Foremost among them is this guy. These birds are known for their iconic whistling flight noise, which is actually produced by the shape of the wings. They make this noise to warn other pigeons of danger, and the intensity of the whistle indicates the level of peril. They're often mislabeled the top knot pigeon, which is another wacky native species. Yep, these are definitely Australian birds. All in all, I just think they're coo. And now for the goodest boys of all. There are six separate species of rosella, and depending on where you live, you'll have a local species. For me, it's the beautiful crimson rosella. These are honestly still my favourite birds to this day. Loving and good-natured. I had a pair that would come to my bird feeder every single day, and I loved watching them. Rosellas are seed eaters, and this has historically put them at odds with farmers, who obviously got their environmental ethics from playing Doom, because many of these adorable parrots were sadly shot. Oh wow, what a beautiful bird. Get the shotgun. Merry Merry King of the Bush is he. It's debatable whether the kookaburra or the cockatoo are the more famous bird, but its call is unmistakable. They're a member of the kingfisher family, but are terrestrial rather than being water-based. Instead of fish, cookies eat predominantly insects, worms, but also lizards, frogs, and small mammals. With larger prey, they kill them by bashing them against the ground or a tree, which is exactly what I do with breast fillets at the supermarket. Gotta make sure it's dead. A common sight throughout Eastern Australia, the male superb fairy wren is renowned for its vibrant blue colour. The females are rather more plain looking. Their groups comprise of a breeding pair and up to seven helpers, which are often non-breeding males. My time will come. The rate of infidelity among fairy wrens is very high. That, or they have very high trust non-monogamous relationships. Females may be courted by up to 25 males in an hour, and 76% of young are born to fathers outside the group. As the breeding male becomes more fertile, his plumage becomes more vibrant, and his testicles grow to 5% of his body mass. This would be like a human male smuggling two large coconuts. And it gives a whole new meaning to blue balls. These little dancers can be found in almost every corner of the Australian continent, identifiable by their black and white plumage, fan-like tail, and iconic white eyebrow marking, which makes them look perpetually peeved. Incredibly charismatic little fellas, the way the willies move is almost hypnotizing, which is a sentence I thought I'd never say. <laughs> Fascinatingly, they weave a cup-shaped nest out of spiderwebs, animal hair, and grass, which definitely suits their eccentric nature. The Pied Karawong is a dark, mysterious, and alluring avian. Wow, he's literally me. They're large black birds with white markings and striking yellow eyes. A relative of the magpie, there are actually three species of Karawong, the Pied, the Grey, and the Black. But the song of the Pied Karawong is the most famous, which is where they get their name. 
Karawangs are altitudinal migrants, meaning they migrate into low-lying urban areas during winter and move back to the mountains when it gets warmer. Another member of the Artamidae family, butcher birds come in three flavours, grey, pied and black. Just like currawongs, the grey butcher bird is more common in my area. These cute little fellas eat predominantly insects and small vertebrates, but they also have a penchant for baby birds. The butcher bird name comes from a unique behaviour of theirs. They impale their victims on a thorn or a branch for safekeeping. This convenient little meat hook can be used to store the delectable carcass for later consumption, or as a gift for a potential mate. And what woman wouldn't want a skewered cadaver? And I'm gonna have to end the list there. Honourable mentions though, to the king parrot and the tawny frog mouth. We're very lucky in this country to have such an astounding array of colourful and charming birds that are so commonplace. I think in our increasingly busy urban lives, we seldom stop to notice them. So if you take away anything from this video, make it this. Just stop to appreciate them once in a while. That's all for this video. I'll catch you next time.